One Deck Dungeon is a one to two player dungeon crawl that uses only one deck of cards and a handful of dice. It was designed by Chris C. Slick and published by Asmati Games in 2017. The expansion Forest of Shadows was published in 2018 and adds rules for poison. The expansion can be played by itself or combined with the base game to play up to four players. In One Deck Dungeon, each player selects a hero which has stats to represent strength, agility, and magic. These stats correspond to different colored dice which you'll use to defeat encounters. The dungeon is represented by a deck of cards and you'll explore it by laying cards face down on the table to indicate rooms. Each turn you can enter rooms to see what's inside and you can attempt to defeat the encounters by rolling dice and matching the colors and numbers you rolled to the challenge boxes shown on the card. For each box left uncovered you will suffer the consequences shown. Hearts deal damage to your hero and hourglasses force you to spend time by discarding cards from the deck which speeds up the game. After after you pass an encounter, you gain loot which will make your hero stronger. You can use the defeated card to gain an item which will add more dice to your pool or increase your health. You can gain a skill which will help you manipulate your dice during encounters. You can gain experience to level up and increase your item and skill limit, or you can discover a new potion to use later in the game. Every time you get through the entire encounter deck, you'll reveal stairs which will take you to the next level. You'll shuffle up the cards and start again, but the next level will be slightly harder. Once you've gone through three levels, you'll encounter the final boss. The boss fight will consist of multiple rounds of combat, and if you manage to defeat it, then you win the game. However, if you ever take damage equal to your health, then you immediately lose one deck dungeon. To set up the game, select one of the five hero cards, make sure the one player side is facing up, and place it in front of you. Next, select one of the five dungeon cards. The boss is shown on the back side, and place it with the turn reference card, covering up everything except the top row. Place one potion token on the turn reference card here. Stack the level cards with the one player side up so that level one is on top and level four is on the bottom. Take all the encounter cards showing a door on the back and shuffle them all together. Place the stairs card on the bottom and put the deck in the center of the table. Finally, place all the dice, damage tokens, and potion tokens within easy reach. Now you're ready to explore the dungeon. One deck dungeon is played over a series of turns. Each turn has two steps. First time passes and then you can choose to explore or enter a room. When time passes at the start of each turn you must spend two time shown by two hourglasses on the player reference. Spending time means you take the top card off the encounter deck and put it face up in a discard pile. So at the start of each turn you'll discard two cards. Next you can explore the dungeon or enter a room. On the first turn of the game, there are no rooms to enter, so you must explore. To explore the dungeon, you take cards from the top of the deck and place them face down until you have a total of four rooms. Later in the game, you might have some rooms on the table already, and in that case, you draw cards from the top of the deck until you have a total of four rooms again. After you explore, the turn is over, so start the next turn by passing time and discarding two cards. On the second turn, you can't explore the dungeon because you already have four rooms showing, so you must enter a room. To enter a room, turn one of the cards face up and choose to have an encounter or flee. If you flee, return the card to the center of the table and end your turn. If you choose to have an encounter, then you'll roll dice to determine the outcome. Later in the game, you might have open doors face up that you fled earlier in the game. You can choose to enter that room again, but you must have an encounter this time. You cannot flee. If you choose to have an encounter, then you'll roll dice depending on the type. There are two types of encounters. Combats have this symbol next to the name and represent monsters in the dungeon. Perils have this symbol next to the name and represent traps and other obstacles in the dungeon. Let's take a look at combat cards first. The edges of the card show the possible loot you'll get as a reward for defeating the encounter, which I'll explain in more detail later. Special abilities are shown here, and they take effect immediately. Some abilities tell you to do something now, like placing one damage on a hero, and others will affect the combat and dice rolls later like spending time for each one rolled. Finally, the challenge boxes are shown here, and this is the area you will be focusing on during combat. Now before you start rolling dice, you get the chance to use your heroic feat shown here on your hero card. The symbols next to the name of the feat indicate when you can use it. This means you can use it during combats, this means you can use it during perils, and this means you can't use it during the boss fight at the end of the game. Feats grant you black dice indicated by this symbol, which act as wilds during the combat and can be used as if they were any color. The archer's eagle eye feat lets us spend two time for two black dice, or four time for three black dice, and after we roll, we'll have to discard one of the dice. Note that we'll only get the black dice for this combat, but we can activate it again in a later combat if we choose. After you've chosen to use your heroic feat or not, then you gather your dice and make a roll. 
Your hero card indicates which dice to roll on the left hand side. For each symbol shown, you get a dice of the corresponding color. So the archer will get two yellow, three pink, and two blue dice. Let's say we also used her eagle eye feet, so we get two black dice, but we'll have to discard one of them after we roll. So now just gather all the dice up and roll to see what you get. Next, you place dice on the combat card, trying to fill up as many boxes as possible. You also have to place dice on all the boxes on the dungeon card. The left side is used for perils, and the right side is used for combats. To place dice on a box, you must match the color, and the values on the dice must be greater than or equal to the number shown on the box. If the box is a single square, then you can only use a single die, but if the box is bigger, then you can use as many dice as you want. Boxes with an armor symbol must be satisfied before you can place dice on other boxes. You can also trade in any two dice for a single black die with a value equal to the lowest number of the dice you traded in. Lastly, you can use your hero's skills to manipulate the dice as long as they show the combat symbol. I'll go over this in more detail later. Once you've placed all your dice, you must suffer the consequences. If you've covered all the boxes, then nothing happens and you skip straight to gaining loot. If you left any boxes uncovered, then check the symbols on those boxes. An hourglass means that time passes and so you discard cards equal to the number of hourglass symbols. A heart indicates you must place a damage counter on your hero. If your hero has damage tokens equal or greater to their health, then you immediately lose the game. Otherwise, you get to gain loot for defeating the encounter. Each encounter card can be used in three different ways as loot. The left side shows the item you can gain. You slide this under your hero and gain the indicated dice and or health in future encounters. The bottom could show either a new potion or a skill. To identify a new potion, slide it under the turn reference card and add a potion token. To gain a new skill, slide it under your hero for use later in the game. There is a limit to the amount of items and skills you can have based on your current level. At level 1, you can have one item and two skills, but that will increase as you level up. To level up, you have to earn the indicated amount of experience, in this case 6. This leads us to the last way you can use an encounter as loot. The top of each card shows the amount of experience it is worth, and if you choose not to use it as an item or skill, you can instead place it under the level card. Once you have the amount of experience you need, remove the experience cards from the game and advance to the next level. When you level up, read the new card since it might give you potions, shown here, or black dice, shown here. These black dice can be used in every encounter going forward. One last thing to note about loot is that you can replace an existing item or skill with a new one if you choose. Take the old card and place it as experience under your level card. Now that you know how to resolve combat encounters, let's look at peril encounters. These work in much the same way, except instead of using all of your dice, you only get to use dice of a single color. Each peril has two choices, and you pick one and roll all of your dice, which match the color shown. Also note that some choices might have a cost, which is shown here. You must pay that cost before rolling. Peril boxes are always big, so you can use all your dice to satisfy the number. Don't forget that you must also satisfy the requirements shown on the peril side of the dungeon card. You can use any skills that show the peril symbol to help you win the encounter. After all dice are placed, you suffer consequences and gain loot exactly as before. Let's pause and take a closer look at potions and skills. To use a potion, simply discard a potion token and follow the instructions for one of the potions you've identified. You start the game with healing, but you can gain more later from loot. Healing lets you remove 3 damage if you use it at the start of a turn, but only 2 damage if you use it during an encounter. Skills let you manipulate your dice rolls in various ways. The left side shows the cost to use the skill. This symbol means it's free, but you can only use it once per encounter, just like all skills. This symbol shows the number of colored dice it costs. In this case, you must discard two yellow dice to use it. This symbol indicates a spell, which requires you to discard blue dice with values equal to or greater than the number. So in this example, you need to discard one or more blue dice with values adding up to two. The right side shows the effect of the skill, and there are a lot of different ones. Some let you gain dice, re-roll dice, or change the value on dice. So now let's get back to the flow of the game. You'll start the turn by passing time, and then explore the dungeon or enter a room. Continue taking turns in this manner until you reveal the stairs card at the bottom of the deck. You can no longer explore the dungeon because there are no more cards left in the deck. 
You may still enter rooms and gain rewards, but don't take too long. For every time spent while the stairs are showing, you place a damage token on it. Once there are three damage tokens, then your hero must take one damage and the tokens are cleared. When you reveal the stairs card at the start of a turn, you can choose to immediately descend to the next level of the dungeon. Or you can wait and explore rooms and at the end of a turn you can choose to descend. To descend, if you are on level 1 or 2 of the dungeon, then advance to the next level by sliding the turn reference card down. Take the discard pile and any other rooms and shuffle the cards back up. Place the stairs on the bottom again. Play through the deck exactly as before, except this time you must satisfy all the boxes shown on the dungeon during an encounter, not just the new one revealed. If you are on level 3 of the dungeon and descend, then you trigger the ending boss fight. Turn the dungeon card over to reveal the boss. Boss fights are similar to combats, but they are played over multiple rounds. Note that heroic feats with this symbol cannot be used in boss fights, so return any stored dice back to the general supply. In each round of the boss fight, you will roll the dice, use skills, place dice, and suffer consequences just like in a normal combat. However, after you suffer consequences, if you are still alive, you strike the boss. For every boss symbol that you covered, you do one damage to the boss. If you do damage equal to their health, as shown here, then you win the battle. If the boss isn't dead, then start a new round by removing all the dice from the card and rolling again. Note that each boss has a special ability shown at the bottom of their card that applies to this combat. Just to reiterate, if you ever take damage equal to your health, then you immediately lose the game. If, however, you make it through the deck three times and also manage to defeat the boss, then you immediately win one deck dungeon. Gameplay with two players is very similar. When you set up the game, make sure each player uses the two-player side of their hero and also use the two-player side of the level cards. You both explore the dungeon together as one party, so decide together which room you will enter and which encounters you will flee. Before an encounter, each player decides if they want to use their heroic feat or not. When you roll for an encounter, each player rolls separately and uses only their dice to activate skills. If you are level 2 or higher, then you must decide who will roll the heroic dice for that encounter and it becomes part of their dice pool. When covering large boxes, you can use dice from both players. If the party takes damage, you must divide it as evenly as possible between the two players. When gaining loot, choose which player gains the item or skill. Experience and potions are shared. If any player takes damage equal to their health, then the game immediately ends in a loss. However, if you manage to survive and defeat the boss, then everyone wins. The expansion Forest of Shadows adds five new heroes and five new bosses to the game. It also includes a sixth hero and six boss that were previously only available on the website. It's designed to be standalone so you don't need the base game to play. The main addition is poison tokens, so if you ever leave a challenge box with this symbol uncovered, then place a poison token on your hero. Poison must be split evenly in a two-player game, just like damage. If there are no poison counters left, then add a damage instead. Each time you explore the dungeon, and at the start of each round during the boss fight, you must resist poison. To resist poison, roll a die and add to it any leaf tokens like this shown on open doors. If this number is higher than the total number of poison tokens, then remove one from any hero. If it's not, then remove one poison from any hero, but also add two damage counters to the same hero. Any effect that heals damage can now remove a poison instead. Another addition is split loot perils. Some peril choices indicate which loot you get as a reward as indicated by arrows like this. So to take this peril as an item, you must choose the top option. Some effects now use the term exile, which means remove from the game completely. Put it back in the box for the rest of the game. Lastly, the starting potion on the turn reference card is Cure instead of Heal. Pick one of the four basic potions to start the game and slide it under the turn reference. Whenever you use that or any other potion, you can heal one damage as well. Also, whenever you gain a potion, you can also heal one damage. There is also a four-player variant, rules for a campaign mode, and the ability to create your own hybrid dungeon by combining cards from both games. All right, and that's how you play One Deck Dungeon in the expansion Forest of Shadows. If you're interested in buying this game or the sleeves I used, check out the Amazon links in the description below. This game is very simple to teach, and even my eight-year-old daughter understood the rules, but don't let that fool you into thinking this is an easy game, because it's not. It's very hard to make it through the deck three times, and the bosses are no joke. You really need to focus on building 
building up your items and skills with the boss in mind because you won't win otherwise. I like the variety of heroes and dungeons, but the core gameplay is fairly repetitive. I don't mind this at all, but I wouldn't play more than a couple games in one sitting. One thing I really like is the puzzle of each encounter card and filling up all the challenge boxes. Something about rolling a bunch of colored dice and using your skills to change them to the values and colors you need is just really fun. Overall, I really enjoyed this game and would recommend it if you don't mind a fairly challenging game with lots of dice rolling. The art is great and the game is very small and portable. It's cheap enough to recommend giving it a try if it sounds interesting and you won't be out too much money if you don't like it. So that's it for me. Let me know in the comments what you think of One Deck Dungeon and whether you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for future videos. If you want to check out more of my videos, just click the links on the screen and maybe you'll find a new game to play. All right, guys, with that, Michael Skeleton is out.